Hi, this is Matt with Intergalactic Herald. Just doing my weekly Star Atlas news recap review podcast number 25. So before I get started, again, just a few things to go over. One, i um, always looking for guests to be on this podcast. So if you're interested in being a guest to talk about the week, past week news in Star Atlas, please go to intergalacticherald.com, find the contact form, and just send me a message there. Two, also, if you're on intergalactichero.com, please sign up for our, my uh, weekly news recap. The last one was number 74, which was what I'll be going over this time, this podcast. Again, please uh, sign up for that. That'll get all the articles and videos from different Star OS content creators delivered directly to your email box, usually on Sundays at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Two, I'm working on a couple of different Star Wars projects. So the first one is the Intergalactic Gear website. So intergalacticgear.com. I'm hoping to uh, start a Star Atlas merch store. So I'm starting first getting some interested in people uh, submitting a merch survey. So I'd really appreciate some feedback on different items you may be interested in. Again, that's intergalacticgear.com. And the other Star Atlas project I'm on right now is starting a non-guild guild at coalition.com again the idea here is nothing wrong with guilds great structure fun to play things like that but if you're either not interested in joining uh, a full a formal guild or you just want to hang out um, talk about star atlas things uh, please go to intergalacticcoalition.com and fill out our interest survey uh, hoping to get uh, some people that are interested and then i can move forward with actually building that community so again that is intergalacticcoalition.com so let's get into what transpired in Star Atlas this past week. So kind of things I've been thinking about, so not always necessarily some news that came out, but kind of thinking more about the upcoming Sage Labs. So one thing, again, I should probably write down where I hear these things, but anyways, it became clear, maybe it was the Star Atlas Discord Foundation Room, that the processes, so the things that are occurring in Sage Labs, so not 100% sure that's travel, though I'd assume so, but definitely they said cr- crafting are processes that will not need you will not have to be actively using your computer though i guess if it's a browser-based game and i hadn't thought about that they never have said can you do this on your smartphone but if it's a browser-based game well anyways we'll find out but the key was it's not like you have to be actively doing something you could start i assume a crafting action and maybe it takes 30 minutes i don't know and you could go away from your computer so the processing you have to obviously start the process on your in the web browser on your computer but you don't have to maintain something so i thought that was really cool first time i kind of maybe they had confirmed that because at some point i was thinking oh they're going to have to do something to keep active otherwise again all the bot problems that occurred during escape velocity so anyway so that was really good also that came out this week, uh, I want to give a big shout out to Afia. Um, hopefully, I think the author was Funcracker, but I guess I shouldn't know for sure. But anyways, Afia published a great Star Atlas Sage Labs guide, and it was extensive. And I think it even got updated. I started reading it, then got busy and started reading again, and seemed things seemed to change. And I think I read it before the last atlas brew that happened last week and then more information came out so anyways it's a great great resource to to learn more about sage lab so i'd highly recommend that afia.com i believe actually no i'm not really sure what that is but search for afia (laughs) star atlas i'm sure google knows where that is the other part on sage labs that i think was in that guide was some new information about movement so again we have extraction take our fleet ships to some asteroids extract things then we go back to, I think, again, the star bases and we craft things, but hadn't, they hadn't really talked too much about movement. So a couple of tidbits I recall learning about movement that made it sound interesting was one, there was subwarp and warp, I think. Anyways, and again, until the game comes out, all these terms could always be subject to change. But the idea that there was, there was two types, one like like in between or I don't know. Anyways, just different types of movement are coming and they have different uh, time and costs. So again, we're getting much more uh, details. Um, again, these Atlas brews are turning out to be just full of information each week. Um, 
again, maybe this is the easiest way to do community outreach and things like that, not publishing large medium articles or creating videos or whatever, you know, just have an Atlas brew, have everybody show up and just talk for an hour plus. Anyway, so those were a couple things that I thought about and helped me kind of better understand Sage Labs. Another thing came out was StarPass. So again, this is the current referral program, soon to be updated referral program name. And again, if you're not familiar with a referral program or an affiliate program, the idea is that a person gets a special link and then they try to get people to buy something. So in this case, buy something on the Star Atlas Marketplace. Another big um, affiliate program that's out there is uh, Amazon, Amazon Associates. So you can put links on your website to anything on Amazon. And if someone buys it through your link, you get a small um, affiliate commission back from Amazon. So Star Atlas is going to do something similar, working with some third-party link buddy, I think. But anyways, but one thing I saw somewhere posted is actually the benefits apply to both parties. So it isn't just that the person pr- promoting it through their link gets a cut. The person using the link gets a reduction. So again, it's win-win for both parties. So I think that's actually a really good way to promote this because who doesn't like to get a discount. So it, again, it's a it's a win-win. There's lots of other details. I think, again, it may have been AFIA's guide of all the nuances. But again, until it's launched, everything's subject to change. So, But anyways, the idea that it's going to help both parties. The last thing I saw somewhere was, again, apparently you could click on multiple people's links, which I'm sure is easy to have. But whoever you clicked on last, that's the referral link that counts. So again, if you're going to go down this path, you want to make sure to figure out that because hate to promote it. And then somebody uses someone else's link and you don't get the, uh, the, the, the benefit. So anyways, another thing that happened in the Star Wars com- uh, community was more information uh, on these, what are called the ships, the Star Wars ships specs V2. So version two. So I think it might've been like a, what is it? Minor announcement in the discord that they've refined them again slightly. So again, we're in this stage where the original specifications for the ships occurred back when they were initially released have been refined and updated and streamlined and made more realistic because now they're actually building the ships and physical space comes into play where pictures, of course, could represent everything. So they're still continuing to refine that, it sounds like. But it sounds like we're also getting pretty close to being done with that as in the sense that I uh, saw somewhere that those specs will be applied to the sage the ships in the in the sage labs in the sense of like cargo holds and things like that so anyways all that kind of does work together which all makes sense another topic prices for r4 rising in marketplace i admit i haven't been really monitoring this much after the oh how many weeks ago maybe it's been months ago now that star alice stopped being the sole supplier with a fixed price of the r4s again the fuel food ammo and toolkits that those prices have been able to fluctuate in the sense that the marketplace now is buyer and sellers for the r4s so somebody posted maybe on twitter something hey the prices are rising Actually, it's now I'm remembering someone actually posted that the prices are continuing to rise which is not good now I don't know that person's specific situation, so I can't speak to that. But I guess in the broader sense, kind of like, isn't this what we were hoping for in economy? So that 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 things are dynamic due to economic forces, supply and demand, all those kind of things. So rising prices is good for the sellers of those, bad for the buyers. But again, that's sort of what we want. I mean, I don't think anybody doesn't want their ship prices to go up in value. So yeah, again, I... I guess i kind of get it um that we were so used to um fixed stable prices that now that the marketplace is fluctuating but it's isn't that the whole purpose of having a uh free market well maybe i don't know if it's a free market economy but a a free unregulated economy i.e that star atlas is not putting stuff into the marketplace at specific values so anyways so just again just something to pass along but again i'm like I think this is okay. Part of the reason I personally haven't been really paying attention is I did the, I went the claim stakes route. So my claim stakes are generating enough 
R4 to supply my ships and score. So I'm kind of similar or same, same place as I w- was before that I just have to check score slash faction, faction fleet once a day, resupply my stuff, and then claim my R4 on my claim stakes. And so that part of my fixed economy just continues to work. So last week, Star Alice did announce their integration with MoonPay. So I need to do a little more research on this. Plus, I want to put out a how-to video. But it sounds like the real big benefit of the MoonPay integration is within the Star Atlas game. We'll call it, let's just call it the marketplace, the thing on the web. <laughs> there will be an option where you can click a button for MoonPay, and then MoonPay will actually handle your transaction to get your uh, m- currency of your country directly into, and that's where I'm not sure. No, I gotta test it into what? Into your wallet? Well, I can do that with Coinbase, which is what I currently use. So, um, again, I'm not saying it's not a cool thing. Uh, a lot of people sounded really interested in it. I just, again, haven't had that, but maybe it takes less stops or it takes away the whole necessity for a Star Atlas player to have to have an account on a cryptocurrency exchange to then get started by either buying USDC or Sol and then transferring that to your Phantom or Ledger wallet and then transferring that into Atlas or Polis. So, I mean, any way to make it easier for players to get into the game, I think is a good thing. I just, again, haven't had a chance to play with it, but goal is to make a video on that and learn a little more. So, Next thing, I think, again, I saw this on Twitter. Lots of people are talking about the tokens, so Atlas and Polis for rising in price. Even though I track my values in my crypto wallet once a week, I don't really look for the, the daily fluctuations. Though I guess Coinbase occasionally sends me an email that ETH, ETH, ETH is up or Sol's down or Bitcoin changes. So, I mean, again, I see that, yeah, it's jumping up or down. But anyways, many Star Wars community members were really excited that the Polis and Atlas were going up. Okay, I I would be too. I just haven't been falling or my amounts are so low that a couple pennies here and there isn't really going to change. So, But if it's true, I guess that goes back to the larger picture of maybe more interest in Star Atlas. Maybe more people are optimistic. I think like I mentioned the last one, part of the token price goes back to me, the stock market, and I understand on the stock market why there's initial public offerings so businesses can get capital. But as far as after that, the up and down pricing, I, again, I don't know how that helps the businesses. But again, our whole U.S. economy and I think other world economies rely upon investing in the stock market. So um, why do prices go up in the stock market? I don't know. Why do prices go up on uh, Atlas and Polis? I don't know. Um, again, I love if someone could... Uh, much more of an economic background could could explain these. Um, anyways, they're going up. Good. Um, next topic. Um, someone, I think it had been mentioned that the upcoming. Oh no, sorry. I think it was that the Phantom, the the crypto wallet, was going to allow auto approved transactions for uh, Star Wars the game. And if you were playing Escape Velocity. There was lots of talk about getting a quote-unquote burner wallet, I think on Soulflare, be to do auto approvals. And the reason why is that every time you moved in escape velocity or scanned, you had to approve the transaction. Because again, this is a on-chain game, so everything is on the blockchain, hence you must approve the transaction. And people were talking about, well, I don't want to uh, break my ledger or clicking so many times. I guess maybe I didn't enough escape velocity to care because once a day was fine and so clicking a couple times didn't really matter part of it was just uh the duo was needed for the um never alone campaign so anyways but there's been a lot of talk that going forward you know for quote unquote playing something in star Atlas, having to stop get our ledger wallet out and approve something yeah that that's that's not a game that's <laughs> that's yeah but given everything that's happened having a hardware wallet seems like the only way to really go if you're going to put any sort of investment and i shouldn't say investment but you're going to spend any amount of money you would hate to you know have a hack and there's been so many soft wallet or warm wallets whatever they call them or exchanges for that matter not that we can use an exchange hacks that nobody did anything wrong so i think so far ledger has not had anything that i'm aware of 
that would be truly you didn't do something yourself but totally outside so i'm still ledger first so the idea that there might be an auto prove function later on in star atlas itself that somehow still protects your asset seems like the best way but having said that if phantom has it and that helps people and they like that and people use one wallet for playing and then move their stuff uh, yeah again it's part of a blockchain game it's it's one of the things i think it becomes a barrier to entry for a lot of people definitely learning all about crypto and all that when somebody just wants to play games so with potentially the moon pay integration potentially this auto approve thing yes these seem to be lowering the barriers for um new people to come into the game and i'm all for all of that so this past wednesday there was another atlas brew so a couple of specific things that i uh noted when i was uh, listening to that uh on delay when I was out watering the grass. Yeah, whatever, whenever I can multitask. So the first thing was, again, about these SDUs, um, scan data units. Ah, again, there's so many acronyms in, <laughs> in Star Wars to keep track of them. Anyways, these other new things that aren't directly related to extracting resources and then crafting those resources into other in-game objects and then crafting those into others. So these are something different. And but it appears, at least from new information, these are going to, again, be directly related to the raffle, so for the golden tickets. Now, they may have a purpose after the raffle, but definitely sounds like these are the incentive to kind of get into the the raffle, which, again, is into then these golden tickets, which are then put into the raffle. So, actually, maybe we should back up. So, the SDUs start a process that you can craft with the ultimate goal of getting a golden ticket. The golden ticket then goes into the raffle, and like any raffle, then you have a chance to potentially win whatever is being given away. The additional thing that it mentioned, and again, I'm not sure if this was the SDUs become this by through crafting, but it was mentioned at the last at Roast Brew that there was going to be some special ships, and it was clarified i think afterwards that some of these ships will never be available in any other way except during this and again that's why i'm not sure if it's part of the raffle or that you can actually take some sdus take some other things you extract craft those and then redeem not craft the ship but just redeem one of these special ships that may only be available during this period so again is that part of the raffle or is it same time frame as the raffle the we'll call it redemption but anyway so more information um they're de definitely continuing to give out lots of uh nuggets of things at these atlas brews and then again once we actually have the launch of uh sage labs um in fact i think they uh, star us published a medium post where they announced the url which i think was labs.starhouse.com so i mean we're getting closer um one thing that did come out of the atlas brew that's caused a little bit of uh whatever in the discord was that they decided to wait a couple more weeks from whatever the rust announcement was because they have decided that improving the ui the user interface of sage labs was worth it so at the brew and i'm sure you can find on twitter or discord some of the before and after pictures of what the ui they had and what they now will have personally to me yeah it looks a lot better so if it takes two more weeks to get that all fine-tuned yeah go for it i mean again at this point what's two more weeks but Having said that, a lot of people were like, yeah, they missed another deadline. Okay. I mean, sure. <laughs> I guess. But yeah, anyway, so it is what it is. You can have whatever opinion you want on the subject. The last thing on the Alice Brew that I wrote down that I thought was interesting was, again, it was Chris, the director of economy. Again, like I said in the last podcast, I totally love his enthusiasm. Like I said, I think he obviously loves his job. <laughs> and he loves doing this. So that's cool. But one thing, again, I'm not an economist, so a lot of this... I just don't catch right away. But he, he mentioned or somebody mentioned that basically the economy of Star Atlas going forward is going to be based on what people think are worth crafting. And I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. And again, this could come down to the specific choice, which players want to play or do certain things. Or it might be necessity, meaning if you don't have a big enough ship or a big enough fleet, there's just no way you're going to be able to get to whatever level of crafting. But maybe you could buy it anyways so i think what it the thing that was intriguing was the idea that you know they put out a little mini game 
that people could try to figure out what the crafting tree looks like. And so, you know, that maybe somebody focuses their gameplay all on extracting things and then they go and just sell it on the marketplace. And if people pick the wrong thing to craft and not all people are interested in it, then that, because of supply and demand, will keep the price low. But maybe somebody finds there's a specific crafted item that's really in high demand and so they can sell it because more people want it. Anyway, I, again, I'm not an economist, so I don't understand all this, but I think what it did tell me, and I think what's intriguing about this is, is the crafting process, so from the extracted things to the end things, which again, we don't know, well, we know a little bit about both ends of those, but not completely other than the the golden tickets, that's going to fluctuate because that's how economic forces are. Again, I wish I was an economist, but okay, cool. I mean, then then I'll probably have to say, yeah, okay, I get it. This is a real economy. I guess the problem I have is I'm trying to balance that understanding with economies I'm aware of. So, you know, I go out to the grocery store and buy something. Well, I know prices fluctuate. You know, there's a hurricane in Florida, and so a couple months later, that means oranges are going to cost more. Okay, I get it. I guess maybe the one that's more simple is why does gas prices go up and down when they're just taking the stuff out of the ground and refining it, but the price seems to fluctuate quite a bit. Then it goes up during the summer because there's higher demand because more people are driving. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, maybe all those principles, which I would have to admit are obviously real because I see the prices change. Maybe all those forces and conditions can come into the Star Atlas economy too. I mean, Maybe. I just, again, I'm not an economist. Um, gaming to me is plain and getting a result. So I'm very interested and we'll see how this goes. So so final two, and these are much more kind of philosophical ones. But based on what I was just saying, I wrote down, what is a game? I mean, is, is what I just described a game to go in? So so first, let's, let's just forget user interface, AAA games, you know, all that. Let's, let's just talk about games, playing a game. So we're obviously going to stay within Star Atlas, but could be playing checkers or chess. Those are games, right? Most people, in my opinion, play games because they get some sort of enjoyment out of it. Again, they could be against someone. So I guess in checkers, you still have to have somebody on the other side. Or it could be the card game Solitaire, which, of course, you can play by yourself. So is what... All this stuff about Star or Sage Labs, is it a game? Because, again, it's been talked about, well, it's the start of the economy. It's about spreadsheet warriors and all this other stuff. And so I guess I have two thoughts. One, a game is whatever someone says a game is. So I may totally dislike Solitaire. Maybe I played it as a kid, but I I couldn't play it now. I got so many other things I would do with my time. But for some people, that's that's fun. It's enraxing. It's enjoying. So obviously, it's a game. To me, it's you just wasting time. So again, is Sage Labs a game? I the holder. Is it a game for me? I think so. I, th- I think it sounds cool. And like I mentioned last one, I I've enjoyed playing RTSs, real time strategy games, and they have this economy aspect where you have to go out and harvest wood stone trees that's wood food and you get all those resources then you can train you know cavalry people or build trebuchets or something so again i've had no problems doing that so maybe it's again just taking what i found enjoyable in the past and seeing if that same mechanic brings me enjoyment in sage labs Um, obviously we know sage labs has no combat and again lots of games are all about combat you know quake shooting someone blowing them up, deathmatch, and then, you know, any other things. And then, of course, you have, I guess, racing games where it's just who comes in first, a la Mario Kart. So, anyways, that's a game. But the second part, I guess, is more of, is it fun? Is Sage Labs going to be fun? And if you look at what we've had so far, the showroom is a great tech demo. Absolutely agree. It's cool, but Replay value, engagement value, zero. Sorry. <laughs> now, again, I, I know they're going to add more stuff in racing and maybe combat. And again, a racing game, 
it's, it's perfectly fine. Uh, some people like racing games, some people don't. That's fine. But I would never not say a racing thing is not a game. That's a game. Mario Kart, Forza, all those. There's a, those are games. Is it fun? If you like that style game, of course it's fun. But of what we've got so far, score, faction fleet, is that a game? No. <laughs> it's clicking a button. That is not a game. Is it fun? Nope. Not fun. Do I do it? Yeah. Why? Because I get these resources. So if it's a stepping stone to something that becomes fun, then yeah, great. No problem. And and again, this might go back to what I've been mentioning in earlier podcasts is this whole idea that I think we got to always remember Star Atlas has never been promoted nor is being designed as a single thing. It's not just a game. It's an economy. It's a metaverse where people could go in and just hang out. It's the governmental part. Again, I don't know if you call that government or excuse me, economy or if that's something else. And then, of course, the DAO is internal and external governance rules. So you put all that together and fun could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people so i don't know i just wrote that down like is it fun well i guess it's been in the end it'll be in the eye of the beholder so those are my thoughts for this uh past week in star atlas so hope you enjoyed hearing my ramblings so again if anyone's interested in coming on the podcast and rambling with me hopefully maybe two people or three or four is much better conversation than just listening to me for how many minutes please again go to intergalacticherald.com con- go to the contact page and just drop me a line there while you're there you'll probably get a pop-up to sign up for our, the new weekly news recap please do otherwise i think it's you can check out for the newsletter i think it's under about or something and fill that out and you can get all the other content from different star Wars community members that i curate over the week so videos and articles and of course anything from star Atlas directly um, also very interested in any feedback you're willing to give on my two star Atlas projects so the first one again is my merch store i have a merch survey please go to intergalacticgear.com and fill that out greatly appreciate it and again i'm looking to build a non-guild guild for people who want to just hang out talk about star atlas different community platform than discord that'll be more based upon threaded discussions and email uh, updates so if you go to intergalacticcoalition.com you can fill out the interest survey there once we get enough people with interest i'll try to move that one forward so i hope you enjoyed this what's this thing we're supposed to say i guess it's a podcast so you can't like maybe you can like it can you like it well, the reviews, re- re- I guess that's for sure you do. Anyways, you know, any any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Again, if you have any topics or anything that way, again, go to intergalacticherald.com, go to the contact form, and you can definitely submit anything you'd like me to chat in my solo shows like that. Other than that, have a great rest of your weekend if you're listening now, which you probably won't be because I haven't even published this. So have a great week ahead in Star Wars. Again, this is Matt with the Intergalactic Herald.